Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I have always been fascinated by the technology within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially as it relates to artificial intelligence. However, as an AI researcher, I have to wonder how many of these systems we could actually develop in real life with our current understanding of machine learning. In the interest of answering this question, and because I'm an MCU nerd who will take any opportunity to binge all of the films in order, I'm going to review the major AI systems of the Marvel Cinematic Universe to determine whether or not they could actually exist. I'll be focusing specifically on the films, so there won't be any mention of the TV shows, and will do my best to not spoil anything, but no promises. Also, if there are other franchises that you'd like to see me do this kind of review for, you can let me know in the comments. Introduced in the first Iron Man film, Jarvis is probably the first thing you think of when it comes to AI within the MCU. And while Jarvis was originally designed as a natural language processing user interface system, Tony eventually expands it to become its own AI system that controls everything from his home to handling business on his behalf at Stark Industries to helping him design the Iron Man suit Mark II. From there, Jarvis went on to act as the AI operating system for pretty much all of the Iron Man suits, as well as the general AI assistant for the Avengers team. I would say that the original versions of Jarvis as a natural language processing UI interface are definitely feasible in terms of whether or not you can create them with current technology. They probably wouldn't be quite as seamless or as fast as his system was, but you could definitely do it. However, as Tony expands the AI capabilities of Jarvis to essentially become an omnipresent AI system that can perform pretty much any task, that's definitely where we start to lose some of the realism. In particular, when it comes to AI, most of the systems that we have at the moment are considered narrow AI, where they only work well and are designed to work well on specific tasks. And so to have a system like Jarvis, you likely would actually need a bunch of different AI systems that are designed to tackle different types of problems. And you'd have to design enough systems to account for any possible problem that you might encounter as a member of the Avengers team, which, are a lot of problems that you might not know to anticipate. Lastly, considering the size of an algorithm that you would need to be able to perform this many different tasks as well as Jarvis does, the power consumption and storage actually of that model would be considerable. So this isn't really something that you could just download to your computer and to all of your different devices without some serious data storage and battery life issues. Now, unfortunately, Jarvis was seemingly destroyed by Ultron, another AI system in the second Avengers film. The Ultron program was originally designed by Tony Stark and Bruce Banner to be a global peacekeeping algorithm that would essentially replace the Avengers. However, in the process of developing the algorithm, Ultron became self-aware and decided that it had to prove its superiority over the Avengers as a global peacekeeping force, destroying them in the process. And with the help of the Maximoff twins, it worked to build an android body made of vibranium for it to upload itself into in order to create a larger android army. Ultron is actually a great example of one of the pretty common AI movie tropes in that it is a well-intentioned peacekeeping system that ends up turning against its human creators after witnessing the state of society. And while it is possible to at least attempt to use AI systems to develop a global peacekeeping force and is currently possible to use AI to develop autonomous drones that can be used for weapons, it's unlikely that an AI system would work as a global peacekeeping force, partially because it's just difficult to solve human problems this way. In fact, one of the major plot points of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, no spoilers, is the radicalization that can come from well-intentioned global peacekeeping efforts. And those don't use AI. Plus, AI becoming self-aware and willingly turning itself against humans is not currently possible, so we don't have to worry about anything on that front. Now, in the process of the Avengers working to prevent Ultron from creating an android army, we learn that Jarvis has actually survived the attack from Ultron by essentially breaking itself into pieces of code and spreading itself across the internet. After putting the code for Jarvis back together, Tony actually uploads Jarvis into the vibranium android body originally created by Ultron, which has been embedded with the Mind Stone, one of the Infinity Stones. And in doing so, the Avengers essentially create the AI humanoid life form known as Vision. Vision essentially goes on to become his own person after helping the Avengers defeat Ultron, and I'm not gonna say any more about that because if you haven't seen WandaVision or most of the other Avengers movies, there's a lot that happens there. And the Mind Stone gives him a wide range of powers from being able to fly to shooting energy beams out of his forehead. Unsurprisingly, of all of the examples of artificial intelligence in the MCU, Vision is probably one of the least realistic ones. 
While we have developed AI humanoid robots, they are very limited in their functionality and are often more for publicity stunts than they are for any real practical application, as evidenced by the Sophia robot from Hanson Robotics and Tesla's robot from Tesla's AI Demo Day, which was a recruiting effort for developers. Plus, creating something like Vision requires the existence of Infinity Stones, specifically the Mind Stone, and as far as I know, we don't have that, but that's also out of the scope of my knowledge as an AI researcher. So with Vision essentially taking Jarvis off the table, Tony goes on to develop a replacement system called Friday. In terms of functionality as AI systems, there isn't a huge difference between Jarvis and Friday. Both systems assist Stark and the rest of the Avengers as needed. In addition to Friday, Tony develops a similar system called Karen, which is embedded in the second iteration of the Spider-Man suit. Tony also develops Edith, a security and defense AI system embedded in a pair of sunglasses, which can be used to access Stark Industries' global satellite network and hack pretty much any computer. But when it comes to realism, I would put Friday and Karen in the same boat as Jarvis, given that they have the same functionality, essentially. On the other hand, Edith is a system that could probably exist in real life, although likely not in the form of sunglasses. I would imagine that military industrial complexes are interested in, if not actively developing systems that can essentially do something like this. So that might be a real thing. Okay, in terms of MCU films, this is probably my favorite film for the technology specifically, even though the AI system that we're going to talk about is not a huge focus at the film. In Black Panther, Griot is a system developed by Shuri, the Princess of Wakanda. It seems to be a combined AI virtual reality system, given that it allows Everett Ross, who's played by Martin Freeman, to remotely control an enemy jet and keep him updated on the status of the lab as an enemy jet fires on him. In general, I personally think that the tech that Shuri develops in Black Panther is super cool, but I'll also note that that particular scene is probably one of the more realistic examples of AI in the MCU, considering that, again, military organizations are definitely developing and actively using autonomous drones for weapons deployment. Now, are their VR graphics as good as in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Probably not, but that's not really the point. But realistic or not, all of the AI systems in the Marvel Cinematic Universe can be broken down into lines of code and sometimes infinity stones that explain their personalities and actions. And while it's unlikely that you'd be able to create your own Jarvis or Vision using your own computer, you will need a practical understanding of the math and computer science behind machine learning to even get started down that path. But if that is a path that you're interested in going down, you should start with Brilliant's interactive course on algorithms. Brilliant is a website and app that has courses on everything from the basics of math, science, and computer science to quantum computing, cryptocurrencies, and machine learning. Their courses are laid out like a story, just like the Marvel films, broken down to pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time. If you'd like to get started with programming or brush up your skills, Brilliant has a great course on Python programming. Or if you're looking to become the next Tony Stark, you might check out their quantum mechanics course. I've had my eye on it myself, but I need to finish the cryptocurrencies course first. The best part is there's no tests and no grades. You can just pick a course based on what you're interested in and get going. Feeling stuck or made a mistake, you can read the explanations to find out more and learn at your own pace. And you don't have to worry about creating an evil super intelligent AI in the process. So whether you've been meaning to start your programming journey this year, or if you're looking to get started in another STEM field, you can click on the link in the description or sign up for free at brilliant.org slash Jordan to get started. In fact, the first 200 people to click on this link will also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. If you want to watch me review another recent example of AI in popular media, you can check out my recent video on the Anthony Bourdain documentary. You can follow me on all of my socials down below, and I'll see you all next week. Bye.